Aloha and welcome to our video on factors that affect climate. The goals for today's video are to describe how latitude, elevation, and mountain ranges can affect climate, but also how large bodies of water, global winds, and vegetation can also affect climate. So if we look at latitude and its effect on climate, we can see some pretty simple things going on here that we'll look at. Now, just on a basis here, we can see that here in the tropics, we're gonna see where it's generally gonna be a little bit warmer and we're gonna get a consistent amount of daylight all the time, okay? In fact, on the equator, they get 12 hours every single day. So it's gonna be more consistent. You're gonna see a lot more sun coming there. As we move to the temperate zones, we're gonna see some fluctuations, and then when we get to the polar zones, we're gonna see some wild ones where we actually have periods of darkness and periods of all light. So we see that little bit of variation, and that's caused by the tilt of the Earth. The other thing we wanna look at is if we notice, we have the sun's rays coming in straight at the equator. And what that means is that most of the energy from these sun's rays are coming in and they're striking the equator and they're hitting at a straight angle. So there's not a lot of deflection going on. As we get up north or south, we'll see that the rays are coming in more at an angle. And here we can see how they're just kind of, they have the ability to bounce off a little bit more. So they're getting a lot less of the energy is being absorbed in the temperate zone and even less up in the polar zone because of the slant of the sun's rays. So the north and south of the equator, our latitude function, it's going to vary just because of the amount of sunlight they get at certain times of the year, but also because the rays are coming in more slanted up towards the poles, less of that energy is being transferred for absorption and warming and things of that nature. Okay, in this slide, we're going to take a look at changes in elevation. Okay, and what we're going to use is two cities that are relatively similar in their latitude. Okay, and we're going to use Phoenix and Flagstaff. Now, Phoenix, Arizona is about 1,000 feet above sea level, where Flagstaff, Arizona is about 6,900 feet above sea level. So we're seeing a significant change in the elevation between these two. And what we notice is, remember we said that the higher up we go, the cooler it gets. So if you go up a mountain, it's gonna get cooler the higher up you go. So here, if we go to Mount Charleston, it's gonna be cooler up in the mountains than it is down here in the valley. So with that elevation change being cooler, we would expect temperatures in Flagstaff to be cooler than temperatures in Phoenix. And that's what we see on our graph here, where Phoenix temperatures are gonna be shown in red and our Flagstaff are gonna be shown down here in blue. So we can see that difference. Now, precipitation up in the mountains, when the wind blows, we get that orographic lifting. So we're gonna see that the winds are gonna blow across and lift up. That's gonna cause condensation and rain. So we're gonna to expect to see a little bit more precipitation in Flagstaff, which is what we see down here, than we do in Phoenix. And Flagstaff is gonna be in the blue again, and we'll see Phoenix in the red. So you can see that elevation, the higher elevation, we generally will get cooler temperatures and oftentimes we'll end up with a little bit more rain. Now this slide kind of shows that orographic lifting again. Remember what we're talking about is we have this air coming in and it blows up against the mountain. As it hits the mountain, it's forced upwards. And as it travels up, it's gonna get cooler. We have the cooling, we have the condensation, we have a little precipitation. And then when it gets to the other side of the mountains, the leeward side, then we're in the rain shadow. So what we're gonna end up with warm air coming as the air expands, it's gonna get a little bit warmer like that. We're gonna be dry air, so it's gonna be a desert. And that's kind of what we see here living in the valley is we have this rain shadow effect going on. Now the other conditions that can affect climate would be water. And remember we said water has a high specific heat, so it takes a lot of energy for it to warm up. So it takes a long time to warm up and a long time to cool down. So this water is gonna act like a buffer. So we're gonna see a lot less temperature variation. It's gonna be a milder climate. So when you're looking at these islands and things by these big bodies of water, we're gonna see a more mild climate for the most part. Now, when we're talking about circulation, what we're talking about are our currents and our global winds, okay? And these are what's gonna be moving around a bunch of stuff for us. So when we talked about currents, we could talk about warm water coming in, warming it up, working as that buffer system with the water, but it would be a warmer buffer or cold water. It'd be a cooler buffer and keep temperatures down. So that's what we're talking circulation are these currents and things. So if we're on the shore, we have a current coming by that's going to affect the climate. 
these global wind patterns are going to determine how the storms are going to move and things of that nature and that'll affect climate as well. Finally, we have vegetation. And we all know this one on a hot summer day, it's a lot cooler to walk across a grassy field than it is to walk across, say, an asphalt parking lot. Vegetation is going to keep things a little bit cool. It's going to increase the moisture of the air, and that relates us back a little bit to this water and this buffer system. So if we have a lot of vegetation, we're not going to see vast changes in temperature as we would if we were in an area that had a little vegetation like a desert per se. Okay, so that's it for our video. As always, the lessons will go into a lot more detail. Good luck on your quiz, and we'll see you in the next video.